Welcome Pen Pals, this is Tom with Gold Spot Pens. I'm here today with another video installment to show off a brand new pen, a uh, brand new line of pens that come from Taiwan uh, called Opus 88. And uh, particularly the Coloro in the eyedropper fountain pen. So uh, without any further ado, let's talk a little bit about Opus 88. So uh, Opus 88 Fine Writing Instruments is a brand uh, that actually has been around for a while. Uh, the founder, Michael Su, has been manufacturing OEM products for other brands for quite some time, uh, at least about several decades, uh, probably from the 1980s, has been producing OEM products for other uh, pen manufacturers. So uh, as per any sort of like legal or non-disclosure causes, like of course can't say which brands that were manufactured. Uh, but uh, has imprinted their new Opus 88 line uh, with their own manufacturing skills. So the Opus 88 Coloro is a partial uh, demonstrator. Uh, let's just take a look at the box. We'll do a little unboxing here. So I have the Opus 88 box here. It's a nice uh, magnet flap box. Opens up. I'll show you. Also opens up here. This is the Coloro demonstrator. Let's unbox the Coloro, which has uh, a magnetic flat box, little brochure that's inside here. And what's really necessary here is this brochure has got um, illustrations which you could follow to fill up the pen because this pen has a unique filling system in the regard that it's not your usual cartridge converter. It is a eyedropper fill only system. So just to talk about the pen a little bit itself, the uh, Coloro is half ebonite, half uh, acrylic. And the acrylic on this is translucent. So it's not completely clear as you can see it has a, an ample amount of transparency, but it is not completely opaque either. So it, it has a very interesting effect in this case because you have two different materials, which the ebonite being the matte opaque material, uh, a little bit more porous. Ebonite was used primarily in pens before the advent of plastic in the 1920s. So you saw a lot of pens, a lot of vintage pens are made out of ebonite, but uh, this pen, uh, it being a modern fountain pen has both the combination of ebonite and of the acrylic uh, resin uh, or plastic uh, to create a truly uh, blended effect of modern versus vintage and uh, uh, new construction but in inspired by traditional uh, materials. So the Coloro, you know, really is unique in that aspect because uh, one of the aspects I find interesting about pen design is when you could play with opacity and you could have certain areas that are translucent, certain areas that are uh, opaque, and it just generates a lot of visual interest when you're looking at the actual design of the pen. So um, a, a couple of other design notes on here is this clip, which is a unique looking clip. I, I really don't see a lot when they put like little details like the, the bezel that goes along the edge of the, uh, of the clip sides here, uh, which seems like it's a pretty strong clip. And then also too, another little design aspect I enjoy is the, is the, the engraving of Opus 88 at the cap lip there. So unscrewing the front section from the cap, we see the nib here. It's a number five uh, Yovo nib, steel. Uh, plastic feed. And uh, to talk about the interesting aspect of this pen is its filling system, which is an eyedropper fill only, um, which those of you who are familiar only with cartridge converter uh, may be saying to yourself, well, what's the advantage of eyedropper? Eyedroppers can fill with a lot of ink. So you could fill this entire barrel full with ink. And the drawback usually to that is you have to worry about burping. Um, burping is a, a case of where there's air, especially if after you use the pen for a while and it's only half filled with ink, there's going to be an ample amount of air in there. So let's say during the cold months, which is cold right now, you hold the pen and you're writing with it and all of a sudden you start to get ink blobs because what happens is, let's say that from the warmth of your hand or like a, a strong light coming from above that's generating heat, 
uh, causes the air inside to heat up inside of the pen and then causes that expansion of air to press out and to push the ink out of the pen. Not fun, especially if you're not expecting it. Um, and not fun if it gets all over yourself as well. So what they've done here is since this is going to be an eyedropper only because, I mean, you can eyedropper technically a lot of different pens, but this is an eyedropper only with a safety shutoff valve, which is the neat feature about this that, that makes it a true eyedropper. So not only do you have that, but also you don't have to grease the silicone threads because your uh, section threads have an O-ring that's already on here as well. So you don't have to really worry about doing the whole silicone grease thing, which you would with any other uh, pen that you would convert to an eyedropper, which we'll show you later how to do this. But uh, we're going to fill up the whole entire barrel. And inside here, you have a, a shutoff valve, which fits when you screw this on here to the front section. Uh, which then prevents the full force of the ink to force out if there was some air that um, heated up inside of the pen. So you have the blind cap here that unscrews and it unscrews out where you could pull on this and this is an ebonite rod that's in here. So you could pull on this rod to push it all the way back you know, for cleaning and purposes to allow the ink or the or water to get to the full back of the pen and then we could screw that back in. And you can feel it when you turn it, you know, it's got that nice, you know, watertight feel, like especially that last turn to make it really nice and tight. Uh, would you need to replace the, the, uh, the O-rings? I don't know, possibly in the future, because I'm assuming that these O-rings are not, you know, indestructible, nor are they, uh, you know, made to last forever, but uh, they feel pretty secure. Uh, only time will tell on that regard. So there's the eyedropper that's here, and I'm just wiggling it out here. It comes out a little bit this way. So, so you have the uh, little eyedropper that we're going to use to draw up the ink and then deposit it into uh, the fountain pen. So with the set of Coloro uh, fountain pens, we also have um, other colors available in this particular design, which are available on goldspot.com. Uh, there, there are different patterns of, of ebonite and plastic colors. These retail for uh, $93 each. And then we also have here is the uh, Coloro Demonstrator, which at first blush may seem a lot like the uh, original Coloro uh, with the ebonite and the resin, but is actually a complete demonstrator that has frosted and transparent effects in the material. The uh, Coloro Demo is comparable in size to the Coloro, a little bit longer, but also a little bit thicker as well. But similarly constructed in regards of, uh, you have the nib, is a, a Yovo uh, stainless steel nib, and this is in the number six size, so it's a little bit larger. The uh, clip is blacked out here. It does not have the same uh, patterning as the uh, Coloro does. The finials are completely clear, whereas you have a frosted effect on the cap and in the body of the pen. And then the front section has a little bit of a two-tone sort of um, thing going on, where I think the, the nib collar uh, is the part that's frosted here, and then the outer section is non, is a complete clear. Very interesting design. I do love the play of opacities, like I said, with the uh, Coloro, with the ebonite and the uh, translucent. And you can see already um, one of the bigger uh, comparisons here is that you'd have the number five versus the number six uh, Yovo steel nib. Uh, sections are about the same, the but the circumference or the diameter of the uh, Coloro Demonstrator is a bit on the uh, thicker side, which is uh, comfortable for a lot of people. Um, the other main aspect is uh, difference is that the Coloro uh, posts, whereas the demo does not. So even though you try as best as you can, I wouldn't recommend doing this because then uh, you're going to end up uh, breaking your cap. But at amply so, the size and the girth of the pen uncapped and unposted is significant. It's not really that missed that you don't have a cap on the back end. It's pretty, it's got a nice weight to it with the cap removed. 
and it, to be honest, if it did have it on the back end, it would be a little bit too long, as you'd see here. It just would be very uh, long and unwieldy, uh, even. But the dynamics of it are the same in terms of its filling system. So the uh, Coloro Demo does use the same system as the standard Coloro in the terms of being able to use an eyedropper. As you can hear there, it's a really watertight seal. It's got the same O-ring that's in here and also has the same uh, shutoff valve that's also built into the, uh, uh, to the pen as well. So you would turn the blind cap, as you're doing here, you would turn the blind cap to move the uh, valve down and then turn it back in to shut it off. As you could hear there, it just, it just has a very tight, I mean, you could also lubricate that a little bit so you get rid of that squeak. Um, that's what I might do if, you know, if I have one of these myself, I would lubricate that a little bit uh, just so it doesn't have that, you know, uh, that extreme squeak, especially when you tighten it down. But you definitely do want to tighten it down all the way. It's a really hard, maybe like quarter or a half a turn just to make sure that that is completely sealed in place there. Uh, because definitely you don't want to leak, especially with so much ink in this barrel, you don't want to leak. So before we go into writing, let's compare with a few other pens that you may also have in your pen collection. So size-wise, we have starting at the left is the Pelican M200. Then we have a Visconti Van Gogh. And then we have a Sailor 1911. And this is the Rialo, so this is the large size. Then we have the Coloro. And then we have the Coloro Demonstrator. So all of these guys, uh, you know, fairly ample sized pens. And the Coloro is up there. It's, it's even larger than the uh, 1911 large in terms of its length capped. So we'll take a look uncapped. We'll do uncapped and posted first. And in the case of the demo, we could only do uncapped because it does not post. A good size comparison here. So if you are preferential to a um, like a 1911 large size, maybe like a M800 type size, the Coloro is going to be a decent fit. The um, only thing being maybe like the the section is going to be a little bit thinner um, than let's say an M800 would be. But then if you look at the uh, Coloro demo, that's definitely going to give you the thickness that you'd be looking for in terms of a large pen and just taking a look at it with all the caps off. I see that Coloro Demo is, is quite large and ample in size. And I could, I could write, you know, with any of these pens unposted and be fairly comfortable with it. Although less, the M200 feels a bit more balanced, uh, less of a small pen with the cap posted, so does the Van Gogh. The 1911 could go either way, um, and I feel the same way with the uh, Coloro uh, could go either way as well. Like it just, it's a, it's a fairly ample pen without the cap posted, and it's well balanced uh, with it unposted as well. We're gonna fill up the Opus 88 Coloro fountain pen. I'm gonna show you how this, uh, this safety uh, shutoff valve works. So first, I unscrew the front section from the barrel of the pen. I'll set that aside. I've got my eyedropper, and this eyedropper came out of the Opus 88 box. I had to slide through the glass section uh, because it was kind of stuck inside of the, the rubber bladder here, so I slid it forward and kind of had to shimmy it forward to get the entire glass tubing out. And I have Waterman and this is the Serenity Blue, which is, I think, what you would refer to normally as the Florida Blue, which was known for that for some time. Uh, it's just a very well-behaved ink, and I want to use something that was going to be vibrant, but also not give me issues in cleaning it out of a demonstrator. So uh, something that I knew that is not going to be a problem in that regard. Very important. You know, I didn't want to stain this guy here. So you know, what I'm going to do is just so that it, the dropping of the ink doesn't interfere with the, with the valve that's in here, I'm going to draw it back a little bit so I have some space to drop the ink in. 
and I'm going to take the uh, rubber bladder here. I'm going to depress it before I put it into the ink because if I depress it while it's in the ink, it's going to blow bubbles because it's forcing the air out. So I'm just going to depress it before I go hand and I'm going to put it into the floor, into the floor to blue or uh, the water mint ink that's here. I'm going to fill it up all the way and then I'm going to deposit it. Just slowly press it. And I feel that that is quite ample for what I was looking for. So one, one full fill right there. Being that I have this, the shutoff valve, there's really no incentive for me other than to fully maximize the amount of ink that I could put in the pen to fill the pen up all the way. So no, no real incentive like you would with other eyedropper pens, you'd want to fill them up. If you convert, let's say, a Caveco Sport into an eyedropper, you'd want to fill it up all the way so that you don't have that big old pocket of air uh, that's inside of the pen that could possibly cause the, um, the issues with burping. And give it that nice, secure, last half of a turn here, just until it can't go anymore. All right, I shut off the, uh, the stop valve. So if you could see, like, no ink, is coming into is coming into the section here. It's not it's not coming in at all because the the shutoff valve is shut right now at the moment. So then when I turn the blank cap to actuate the valve here. So I'm unscrewing it. And it takes quite a while to unscrew, but it's it should be able to allow the ink towards the front of the pen. So this kind of works a lot like the uh, Custom 823 with the vacuum filler. You could let it, it let it open in order for it to start uh, it flowing the ink towards the, uh, the nib of the pen and everything. Now that I know that I have ink flow, I'm going to twist the shutoff valve and close it off here. And what this does is that, let's say for example, there's a, all of a sudden there's a, a dramatic change in temperature and whatever air that's inside of this barrel starts to heat up, that it's not going to push the ink out and burp on the paper. So let us do a little test right here. This is a medium steel nib in the number six size. Great flow, smooth, just a slight little hint of feedback. Very, very small hint. It's it actually has quite a, a glassy finish to the polishing here that I wasn't really expecting. I'm quite pleased by the performance of the uh, Opus 88, the Yovo nib that's on here. Works right out of the box. 
Uh, I was a little hesitant at first about how the uh, the stop valve works, but the uh, but it works and it was able to flow right away. It gave me no hesitation, and uh, as you can see by the writing here, just started up right away. No skipping, no hard starting, no dry uh, writing. It just is a very very nice rider. Like I said, smooth, but. Uh, not glassy smooth, but it's a stainless steel nib, so you could kind of expect that. Um, you know, it's it's a mono line, so it doesn't have any line variation, uh, no flexibility in the nib. Although, let me just uh, give that a, a whirl right now. No, this this nib is just you know has no variant characteristics in terms of its ability to flex or to show any line variation. It is just a standard medium monoline writing nib, which is good. It's a it's an everyday sort of pen. And this is going to be a pen that, you know, I could see folks like, uh, you know, big time writers, anybody like uh, uh, Neil Gaiman or, uh, you know, Stephen King being able to take one of these out and, and be able to polish off uh, a number of pages before even having to consider to fill up again with ink. Uh, as this fills up with a tremendous wealth of, uh, of fountain pen ink here. And now we're just wrapping things up. So uh, to discuss about this uh, this particular pen, this this new model from Taiwan here that we're really excited about because it, it offers a lot of uniqueness in terms of its design and its function. Folks who have been eyedroppering pens for years and have been struggling with the issue of burping on the page or worried about the fact that ink will leak out of the pen. The design of the Opus 88 allows you to kind of use that in a more safer and uh, a less hassle-free environment. And the design of it, of course, is very unique in terms of its uh, ability to play with opacity and uh, with a half demonstrator, half non-demonstrator uh, version of the Ebonite and the, the combination of the old vintage material with the newer uh, uh, translucent resins. Um, the overall design aesthetic and the size of it, is, it's conducive to uh, people who enjoy a larger size pen or who enjoy a pen that uh, just has a nice balance while it writes and uh, just looks good. I mean, this is a great pen to Instagram with. You see the you see the large wealth of ink that's inside of there. You go with like a different color. It changes the complexion of the pen entirely. Uh, same deal with the uh, with the other Coloro too that has the the tinted um, colored barrels. So a lot to of offer here at a very affordable price. This uh, Coloro demo is only going to set you back $120. Uh, which, I mean, you look at a pen that's in similar size, like a uh, Suvron 800 from Pelican, or even like the M205 from Pelican, um, that'll be up in the uh, 180 to 200 range. The standard color and the colors with the Ebonite, that'll only set you back $93. So it's not, it's not really that bad to, to look at a nice high quality steel precision nib, uh, unique design, eyedropper compatible right off the bat, it, they're very, very good pens for the money, and I definitely think that this is worthwhile taking a look at to add to your collection. And, uh, and as an everyday writer, um, as a long-term writer, something that you could be writing with for pages and pages and pages before even considering uh, an ink change. We have both of these models available at the time of this video. You can also find us on the uh, social media sites, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and Facebook. I appreciate you guys uh, coming out, taking a look at the Opus 88 Coloro. Hope that you had a, a good amount of information here to uh, soak in and be able to see uh, what these guys are all about. And if you have any questions, you can always feel free to email me directly at tom at goldspot.com. If you'd like to place an order for these, we have them live on www.goldspot.com. And if you just want to leave a comment and let us know what we're doing as far as our videos are concerned, you could always throw one down below, subscribe to us on YouTube, and, uh, and I hope that you guys have a great day. Stay inky, my friends.